Hello and welcome to the How to Choose Happiness and Freedom Show. I'm your host, Lauren Foster, happiness teacher and founder of Be Happy First. As a certified life mastery consultant, masters of wisdom and meditation teacher, and primal health coach, I'm on a mission to help 1 million women learn to be happy and free on purpose. Healthy, wealthy, and joyfully living life on your own terms. Happiness is a choice, and you can always choose to be happy first. Thanks so much for being here. Now on to today's episode. And good morning. Happy August the 11th, 2020. And welcome to the How to Choose Happiness and Freedom Show. Again, I am your host, Lauren G. Foster. The G is important in my name if you ever... Um, try to Google me. You need the G because there's a lot of Lauren Fosters out there. So um, today we're going to talk about money. We're going to talk about how the law of attraction works around attracting wealth. Now we talked last week on Thursday that I'm having a great time celebrating my birthday month. So the, 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 the times are kind of blending together, but, um, we talked last week about your belief in your mindset around money and what type of income and wealth you feel worthy of that you feel deserving of. And what is your opinion and your deep seated beliefs that you've been taught your whole life around money, around wealth, around rich people. Are you still stuck in fairy tale land where you believe that all rich people got there by by stepping over the heads of other people? Or do you believe that in order to do great deeds in the world, you need a lot of money? And that most of the really, really rich people in the world are doing really great things with all of that wealth. And so the first step in figuring out what your, how to fix your mindset is figuring out what it is. Hello, Tammy. Thanks for being here. I didn't, the last time we didn't, I didn't even say hello. I was in such a a weird (laughs) focused place, but I'm happy that you're here, whether you appear as Be Happy First or as my darling friend, Tammy Todd. And awesome partner. So this is not something that you can just wake up one day and do. You can't go from earning $50,000 a year to believing that you can earn a million dollars a year. It's very, I'm not, I'm not going to say that you can't. It's difficult. Everything is possible, but making that giant leap in your mindset is not that easy to do, but you can begin to step up and step up and step up and step up and eventually just reprogram your brain to have different beliefs that money is good, that money is awesome, that money is energy, that is your birthright to have whatever amount of it you want to live whatever lifestyle you want. And just, and and this is not about keeping up with the Joneses. It's not about fancy cars and fancy houses. It's about the freedom that money gives you to make your own choices. Do you see what I mean? And so, it, and, and you don't have to wait to have a, you know, a giant amount of money in your bank account or a giant empire built in order to feel free and happy. In fact, the way that you get that giant empire and the healthy bank accounts is to make yourself into a person who has that mindset already. And that this is where the the subtleties and the walking the fine line between persistence and perseverance and not giving up and and believing in your dreams and striving for the things that you want to create in this world and not trying too hard. So a lot of times when people start to learn about the law of attraction, they get the idea that all they have to do is think positive and visualize and all of the things that they are dreaming of will come to them without any action on their part. And this is not the case. Now, the other end of the spectrum of people who have never heard of the law of attraction and are only operating on the beliefs that they've been taught and have grown up with are that you have to work hard. Your money has to be covered in blood, sweat, and tears, or you don't deserve it. Or you, So you have to earn it, and it has to hurt, and it has to be hard, and all these things. So that the happy medium in between those extremes is to 
have an understanding deep in your soul of what it is that you really want and be in love with that vision for your life. Now, this doesn't have to be specific. It doesn't have to be, oh, I, I must live in this place, in this exact type of house. And this, the, the feeling of this is what is important for your vision. Because when you get too completely attached to specifics, especially when it comes to people and relationships. Now, imagine this, that you have a picture in your mind of the type of relationship that you want to have, the type of person that you want to be spending your life with, the, the, the kinds of things that you want to do together with those people and with that person. And so th this is your wonderful, awesome, and beautiful vision that you are waving your magic wand to create. Now, if you take that and turn that person into a specific person, then suddenly you are attempting to cast spells on an individual person and to manipulate and create in the reality of another person. Whereas if it's just general, th this is the type of person, this is the kind of relationship, then the universe has the whole population of the whole entire world to choose from and to put in your path. So in being specific is, is, fun and awesome and helps you to get in the feeling place. So like I, I have a, a pretty clear picture of the next home that I want to live in. You know, I can, I can picture the meditation gardens that I want to have, and I can picture the big luxurious baths that I want to have in every suite and the outdoor areas where I want to have, you know, outdoor showers and outdoor baths. So people get to be out in nature while they're showering. And, and I love all of these little details of all of these things. Now, they those things are changeable, but the feeling of that is what those details help me to get into. And that adjusts my vibration. And that means that as, if I can hold that vibration, the universe must bring things that look and feel like that into my physical manifested existence. That's just the way it works. And the same thing works with money. If you are feeling like, oh, I could never have a million dollars. It's too hard. I don't know how. I don't have the skill set. That could never happen to me. These are, these are beliefs that will keep money from coming to you in, in those increments. Whereas if you can shift your thinking and begin to say, well, Lots of people earn a million dollars and more, so it clearly can be done. And I know there have to be ways that I can figure out that can take me in that direction. And so you have the beautiful vision of what it is that you are wanting to create, including the wealth that you want to create. And then you line yourself up with that. And somebody is cutting down trees in my neighborhood. I'm going to close this with it. Two seconds. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but just in case, we're going to try to minimize that noise. My apologies. So the fine line between anticipating great wealth and turning yourself into a vessel that is capable of receiving great wealth and taking the inspired action to move in this direction. Now, you might wind up working 12 hours a day. But it's not going to feel horrible. It's not going to feel hard. It's not going to feel difficult. When you are doing something that you love, that you are inspired to do, that you are in this perfectly lined up place with the universe and, and are co-creating in this amazing way, it doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like striving. It doesn't feel like pushing against. It feels like allowing. It feels like being in the flow. It feels like being, having all your neurons firing just exactly as they are, are meant to, and you know what the next steps are to do. And then the universe is doing its part by bringing you ideas, bringing you resources, bringing you people who can help you and want to help you, who are co-creating in the, in the same ways that you are. And so allowing for all the infinite possibilities in the universe and keeping your eye on the prize that this is, this is the life skill that we're teaching you. Being so in love with your life in this moment and so in love with the life that you are creating, this is, 
This is what it means to be happy and free on purpose. You already have everything that you need in this moment to be happy if you choose where to put your gaze, right? And your freedom. I love the story of, <laughs> so, so Tammy, Tammy, you could hear the, the trees, right? I was, I was right to stop and close the window so that we could hear it less, right? I'll, I'll wait for your comment to come across. All right, so one of my favorite books that is, this is, is timeless, is um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And back in my transformation phase back in 2012, when I was creating this new um, existence for myself, when I was saving myself from bankruptcy and homelessness and joblessness and, um, you know, that, that really awful place that I was in and relearning and reapplying all of the, the skills that I had encountered, but hadn't yet really figured out how to wield. Um, this, this book was really important to me at that time. Um, thank you. <laughs> so the thing about semi-civilization, sometimes people cut down trees. All right. So there's a story in this book called Three Feet from Gold. And this is back during the gold rush. There was a man named Darby Darcy, Darby or Darcy, yeah, I can't remember, you'll have to read that for yourself in the book, and I'm summarizing this, but basically he caught the gold fever, and he went out and poured his whole heart and soul and all of his resources and all of his energy and his hard, hard work into digging for gold. He had a very strong desire to hit gold. Um, Napoleon Hill says in the book that he had not yet discovered that more gold has been mined from the minds of men than in any, you know, gold vein, but I digress. So Darby digs and digs and he hits a very rich vein of gold and he can tell that this is going to produce a lot, but he's got to have machinery and equipment and things like that to be able to bring the gold up. So he quietly covered up his mine and went back home to raise funds and get the equipment that he needed. So family and friends had faith in him and had faith in his ability to um, create wealth that he would then share with all of them from this gold mine. So he brought all the equipment out and they were digging for gold and they brought up the first carload and he was just so ecstatic that they had found gold and they continue on. And then all of a sudden, no more gold. The vein just ends. And they, they dug some more and they dug some more, but there was no more gold. And so finally Darby gave up and he gave, he sold the, all of the equipment to a junk man for just a few hundred dollars and went back home in defeat. Well, some junk men are not that smart, but this one was very smart. So he went and hired an engineer who could assess the gold mine and tell him, where that he should begin to resume digging and the gold was three feet from where Mr. Darby had stopped digging and so he had stopped three feet from his goal of, of, of my of reaching this incredible resource of, of gold reserve of gold so the lesson that he learned and he eventually became a very very wealthy man but he always remembered that lesson that something that looks like a failure is not necessarily a failure that there maybe there just needs to be another way to look at it maybe there just needs to be another resource maybe you know whatever but failure a apparent failure does not mean failure until you quit so staying on your path that doesn't exist yet. You are creating your path as you go. You can never get it done and you can never get it wrong. So finding a way to enjoy each and every step of your journey on the way towards what it is that you want, this is the secret. This is the trick to making yourself into a person who can attract wealth. So finding the balance, finding the balance between allowing and relaxing and going with the flow and taking inspired action, opening your mind to ideas and tuning into your own instincts to the way that God speaks to you is through your gut. You know, you, you know, sometimes you just have that knowing of something. And when you follow those impulses, usually things turn out great. And when you don't, you look back and go, oh my gosh, why didn't I just listen to my instincts, like 
a perfectly sunny morning, something tells you to bring an umbrella. And you go, but the sun is shining. I'm not bringing an umbrella. And sure enough, the weather changes and you wish you had it. So, you know, your, your mind, your soul is hooked into infinite intelligence that can see forever in both directions. So all you have to do is pay attention and, and tune in and be aware of the messages that the universe is sending you. So this is what you do. You attract what you are. So you turn yourself into a person who is accepting of great wealth who is accepting of opportunities, who is expecting great things to happen every day. And in the meantime, you're turning your attention to all the things that are going right. You are choosing to put your gaze on the things that are beautiful and not on the things that are not. So next, um, oh, I want to tell you about the um, mental wellness seminar, video seminar that is going on right now. I'm going to put the link in the comments. There's only two more days of this today, tomorrow, and the next day. And my interview will be tomorrow, which is Wednesday, August the 12th. And there are amazing teachers here, doctors, functional medicine doctors, psychiatrists, um, people with personal stories of healing from autoimmune diseases. And so today, if you are listening to this today on Tuesday, go and get hooked into that today. The, the two speakers today are talking about essential oils and talking about recovering from a lifetime of autoimmune disease and migraines. There's two awesome teachers today. So I'm going to give you the link to that. And I'm going to be back here on Thursday to talk with you more about how to attract money. We're going to talk about the law of receiving. We're going to talk about the law of gestation. We're going to continue the great topic of money and wealth and abundance on Thursday. So I'm going to be back then. In the meantime, remember that happiness is a choice and you can always choose to be happy first. I'll see you Thursday.